All right, metalheads, welcome to another met episode of Metal Verbalizer's podcast. Uh, today is a very special episode, actually, because it is episode 100. So uh, we thought that we would uh, sit down together and uh, make a little bit of a special episode for you, for you guys. Uh, we're gonna yeah. talk a little bit about everything that has happened uh, during the these actually just over two years that we have been uh, doing this podcast right now, and we will be listening back to some anecdotes and funny moments that has happened on the podcast. Unfortunately, I don't have a compilation of bloopers and that sort of stuff, uh, but which would have been fun. Maybe that is for. 200 or 500 or something uh but yeah we're we're here together and uh it was a long time ago that we two were sitting down and making an episode together usually we have a yeah. band with us yeah i think i think it was like uh, we've done it like uh, once maybe twice before so yeah i think i think it was our first ever episode yeah uh, this is metal verbalizers then we had an episode that we called Honorable Mentions. And yes, uh, exactly. Then we had an episode as well where we had as, as an introduction for season two of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just yeah. over I, a I, year. I, 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 I kind of noticed now how, how many episodes 100 episodes is because I yeah, totally exactly. forgot that actually. <laughs> and and lot, like when we were preparing for this episode, we actually had a look and we saw that. It is actually uh, uh, almost 90 bands that we have been verbalizing, yeah. which is absolutely insane to me. Yeah, and the crazy thing about it as well is that, you know, it, it kind of feels like it's 90 bands, which, so, which, which sounds a lot, and it is, but it, it's still like just a little, little bit of all the bands that we would like to talk about, you know, so absolutely. far. So, but yeah, we, so have, we de definitely have a lot to do uh, in the future as well. We have already been in contact with bands and uh, yeah. we have bands lined up for new verbalizing episodes. So yes. this will not absolutely not be the last episode of Metal Verbalizer's podcast for sure. We have yeah, no. We have a lot in the pipeline and we have uh, a lot of plans that we would like to do as well, which we are going to yeah. talk a little bit about later in this episode as well. Uh, but, but I mean... If we would start with, do you have any like favorite bands that you have been verbalizing, or any like that you really remember? Yeah, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> it's very hard to to uh, uh, answer like a specific couple of bands like that because it's like that thing is like a reason why I make episodes about the bands. So like. The answer to that is the reason why I make an episode about the band. So, uh, I think it's really hard to to say say it like that. Yeah, I, I guess I can agree with that because the how we pick the bands is that we pick bands that where we enjoy the music. Yeah, and actually like the music. We don't just pick a band to pick a band to verbalize. Uh, we we always listen to the music and it is the music that is gonna make us wanna make an episode. So yeah, exactly. If we have make if we have made an episode about a band, we do like the music. Uh yeah. So I guess it's very hard for me uh, as well to like pinpoint an exact band that I do like. I, I have done with quite a bit of different genres as well uh i don't just do old school, 80s old school heavy metal i've done symphonic metal i've done power metal i've done blues rock i've done 80s 80s old school metal uh type of a thing uh, it is a very broad uh spectra of the uh, genres that i've been touching upon uh, whereas uh whereas about you you have done Mostly thrash, I would say. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then uh, you yeah, have tapped into black and death metal and that sort of stuff yeah. as well. And uh, even combinations of the genres. 
Uh, yeah, quite a few of those as well. Yeah, I mean, Hell Affected is one example. Yeah, absolutely. I th I, th I think actually I have more bands. I'm not gonna say like for sure right now, but spontaneously, I think I'm more black thrash bands than I have pure black metal bands yeah. even. So yeah. I think we, uh, when we looked back for some other projects as well, uh, we looked back and realized that often there are combinations of the genres, uh, which I kind of like, uh, because uh, bands today don't just play hard rock or something, or just doesn't just play symphonic metal. Uh, a lot of the bands that I've done Legio of Madness, uh, for example, uh, which we are we are actually gonna listen a little bit on that of that episode later, uh, yeah. and that band, for example, it is symphonic metal, but it's not just symphonic heavy metal because they have some uh, some parts where they use growl, for example, as well, which is yeah. not really common in like heavy metal yeah i mean i think it's a like a way for bands as well to like kind of try to become like uh original and kind of like finding yeah. their own identity and an original sound by kind of like mixing together things that they like and yeah exactly making and they're thing. they're trying to like yeah. pick uh, their favorite parts of different genres so maybe the band you have a guitarist like that like death metal and you have a drummer that is more punk uh but a bass player that is more blues rock uh yeah and, yeah and then yeah, they I'm bring the genres together into one sound i think that's really cool today where we see yeah and, it, and i'm going into that a little bit in the uh, episode about the uh, thrashist regime as well uh th that kind of thing that uh, like the different uh members of the band are all yeah. like writing for the band and they all have their own little, like, you know, thrash metal niche. Uh, yeah. One member is, like, a little bit more old school, and uh, one other is maybe a little bit more new wave, uh, like that, you know, so you can, like, get a mix to kind of form their own sound and their own approach to thrash metal. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think often I have noticed that when I've been in contact, because... We always contact the bands when we make an episode, yeah, uh, and to ask them a, a couple of questions to help us uh, to make uh, the episode. So often it becomes a little bit of a written interview, to some extent, even though it's not a lot of questions, but it's a lot to give us an idea of how they think about their sound and their image. Uh, Oh, a lot of what we're we were touching upon in the episodes, yeah. and uh, one of the questions that we often ask the bands is what bands they would compare their sound to, to give you guys, the listeners, uh, an idea of what to expect uh, when you're listening to said band. Yeah, or I mean, what their like uh, influences are as well, because like yeah, that, that's another know, kind of question what... that we do ask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you know, like, what, what influences a band has, you can probably get a pretty good yeah. idea how what kind of style they might have. Like, if, if you know that a band is influenced by a band like, you know, Early Creator or uh, Niflheim, uh, which yeah. is the case for a Nuclear Revenge, for example, uh, then, then you kind of have somewhat of an idea kind of how they might uh, kind of, like, what their style might sound like a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And and where I, what I was getting to uh, with uh, the question about what bands they were would like to compare their sound to, is that they, a lot of them, if not all of them, start their answers with "That's a very hard question," uh, yeah. because it's often like bands that comes from very different genres because they're picking and choosing something from this band say accept and then they might uh, love uh, sodom or something like that so so thinking about the church in the background 
yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, it was maybe uh, in the back of my mind, but I didn't ac actually think about it before I saw the third shirt. Um, but anyways, it's often very different in uh, what they like and don't like. And it's never just one band that uh, has built up the sound. It's often maybe seven or eight bands. And yeah, even though I might mention three or four bands, I, I often, more often than not, I don't mention, I do not mention all of the bands that they, they mention. Because that then I would like sitting for 20 minutes and talking about bands <laughs> that has influenced the sound. But I think that's really cool and uh, I like it. I don't really, I, I don't know, remember really who it was that said it, but um, and I don't remember Slayer it was. Uh, but I don't remember who said it. But if you want to sound like Slayer, don't just listen to Slayer. Yeah, you I have think it was Matt. It might have been Matt. Uh, yeah, you have to listen to uh, what Slayer listened to to understand why they sound like they sound. Yeah. And I, and I think that's uh, a very wise way of thinking about it. Because if you just listen to Slayer, you, you're never going to understand really why Slayer sound like they do. Yeah, but it was like his point was also that like if you only listen to Slayer and try to be Slayer, you will only be like a cheap copy of Slayer. Exactly. But if you listen to what they listen to, you can kind of like kind of get that sound, but kind of like at the same time doing kind of like your own thing with it. Yeah. In that sense, so that's like kind of the the point with that. With that exactly. Uh, example. Uh, and we can take Motorhead for example. An example as well. It's a like heavy as fuck heavy metal, but a lot of the riffs and such is based from blues. Yeah. And uh, he has also made a lot of covers like Blue Suede Shoes, for example, uh, because he listened to a lot of blues. And that's where it, their sound is rooted in, yeah. even though it's heavy distorted guitars and an iconically heavy distorted bass and a, a lot of driving drums and which is more common in heavy metal maybe uh and so if you want to understand motorhead's sound you need you need to listen to blues yeah for sure because that's what the sound is coming from even though they have turned up the gain so so i i think that that analogy that Matt used is very good. And yeah, uh, yeah I, to I totally agree with it as well. And I, I think that's one of the reasons as well that we really want to use that question when we make our episodes to understand where the sound is coming from and to get a yeah. picture of the sound. And I think that yeah. that's why we have the questions separated between influences and what they would compare their sound to. Yeah. Because with that analogy, that splits those questions in two and make it into two different questions. Yeah. Because one one question is going to give us a picture of the sound and one question is going to make us understand the sound. Yeah, yeah, that, make, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how I think about it, at least. But with that said, uh, maybe it is time to start listening to some uh, anecdotes and stuff. Uh, yeah, because, sure. Because uh, one of the ideas that we had from this for this episode was that we were to we're, we were going to look back at how we sounded back in the days when we started with this podcast and to see how we have evolved into what we sound like <laughs> now. It's different. It's very different. <laughs> I, I had to listen to, when preparing for this episode once again, I listened back to what I sounded like 
uh, and how I had edited every everything. <laughs> and like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing this for uh, quite a few years now. Yeah, it's like almost two and a half years now. Uh, yeah, I think it's about... We, we, we're, we started in the late January for over two years ago. Yeah, and it can happen to quite a lot over just a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I learn as well to edit in a different way yeah. and evolve that. And uh, we're, we're, one thing that is a big no-no when editing sound is to use headphones. And uh, every single episode that we have done is edited on the headphones that I use right now. Uh, yeah. So in the future, I would like to upgrade with some uh, monitors so I can actually uh, hear proper frequencies. But that's some technical stuff. Uh, but if we were to look back, uh, you had your episode, uh, which uh, was your health affected episode. Yeah. And I think that, that that episode is very like fun to look back at because... It was the first ever episode that we made. Yeah, literally the first one. If you don't compare the uh, introduction thing. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I think that uh, we're gonna look back at that uh, episode. All right, welcome to this podcast. You're listening to Mel Verbalizers, and I am you one. And today I will verbalize the band Hellfected. Hellfected is a black, black and thrash metal band from Stoke on Trent, UK. Uh, I believe Stoke on Trent is actually the birthplace of the one and only Let Me Kill Mister as well. So, I mean, Already there, it's like, how could this be bad? Am, am I right? Uh, but anyway, um, Elfected is a really cool band that I personally am very fond of. Uh, and I'm a big fan of them myself. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, if these guys can get some support and stuff like that, they could definitely become something very, very great. Anyway, um, uh, they released a single titled Fire at Will in 2019, which uh, I believe was the same year that they were formed. I think I have a small recollection that, that Hellfector was formed in 2019, though I'm not, I'm not 100% sure of that. But uh, I believe so. Uh, and uh, actually the year after, in 2020, uh, they released a debut full-length album woe to the king of blood i think that's actually pretty cool uh, as well that uh, it took them like a year to release a whole full length uh, i don't i don't think that is like very common i think for for most bands especially nowadays i believe is that it usually takes them at least a few years to kind of get their debut full length or even even debut EPs out there usually takes a few years maybe like you know two to three maybe four years it's usually in my experience when I kind of looked around a little bit is that that is probably like the most common so so definitely when when Hellfected is releasing a full length one year later uh, it's, it's very very cool and and, and very, 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 very great, you know. Uh, I would also kind of want to say, uh, while we're speaking about Vote to the King of Blood, is that I really, really like that album a lot. Uh, it's, it just, it just filled with super, super heavy riffs. And, and like, a lot of, a lot of memorable songs and, memorable riffs uh, memorable choruses stuff like that and i i think it's like you know, you know like with, with the with the with the title track that the the album starts with it's just 
that that thing that thing usually follows me for days after I hear that song. Like every every time it gets completely stuck in my head. Just the, just kind of like chorus going going on repeat in my mind and just you know that that I kind of build up in that song you know with like uh, with the bells and 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 all that. It's just it's it's just really really fucking cool. I think that's enough the with the, that clip, but yeah, that was the first ever episode uh, that we made. Yeah, I was even swearing back then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we don't really swear that much in our episodes. Yeah, we 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 we're gonna have to fix that. I think that hell affected the when when we had the the chore stories episode with Matt and uh, Liam. I think they had a bad influence on us during that episode <laughs> because we were swearing during that episode as well. Uh, I guess that that episode is maybe not the most appropriate for children. Uh, <laughs> It, it, it uh, definitely is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but but yeah, I mean, you 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 can you can definitely hear it, like significant differences uh, from back then. Yeah, uh, uh, one one thing that I I uh, noticed is that you were jumping into the actual music pretty much uh, straight away, which is something that we yeah. don't really do today. Uh, we don't really today. We are like I said before. We're we're touching upon the influences, and we're comparing them to trying at least to compare the sound to some bands to give a picture. We're t- we're talking a little bit about the image of the band, and so on and so on. Before yeah, we're, we're definitely... starting to touch upon the actual music. Yeah, we're definitely more structured now. I would say. Yeah, because you can kind of like tell pretty clearly that. Yeah, I was kind of like talking pretty, you know, I wouldn't say randomly, but, you know, kind of what I mean. It was, yeah, was kind of like more r- randomized uh, things like that. But now it's more like structured, I think. Yeah, it, and uh, we didn't contact the bands in the same way and using these no. questions no, we did not. either. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't, I, I don't I, think I, I contacted the bands at all in the beginning. Yeah, I, I had already been in contact with uh, Hell Affected as a band and uh, Liam uh, long, long before we even started the podcast. But uh, yeah, I wasn't in contact with them in the same sense that we are yeah. with bands before episodes today. No. Yeah, exactly. Because now, now we have structured everything. We have a clear picture of what questions we yeah. want to go upon when we make the episodes. And uh, I think that the tempo in the episodes has changed quite a bit as well. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I had another an episode as well back then uh, that I made after the Hell Affected episode, which was about a band based out of Malta, which was called the Clockwork Wolf and Company. And uh, I guess that that uh, band... Uh, is fronted by a, a guy called Rob Chapman, which is uh, more known from uh, his uh, YouTube channels and collaborations with uh, the British uh, uh, music store Andertons, that is uh, based out of south of London. Uh, but I listened to Clockwork <clears throat> Wolf and Company, and it's like. Is a more bluesy gospel type of a vibe in their music, and that's that's a kind of music that I really like to listen to. Uh, so that's why I made the episode. Uh, so I guess we can listen a little bit about on that episode as well. Hello there, metalheads, and welcome to the Metal Verbalizer podcast. My name is Eric, and today we're going to verbalize an awesome band called Clockwork Wolf and Company. Uh, I believe it started by the YouTube personality uh, uh, Rob Rob Chapman, uh, and the band is based in Malta and is rocking out to some bluesy, rocking Americana style music. 
which is a, such an amazing combo. It's really worth together those three components uh, because it just gets this vibing so good. And uh, I know that I said that it was started by the YouTube personality Rob Chapman. But the thing with Rob is that, in my opinion, he is a musician that decided to make YouTube videos. And uh, not a YouTube a YouTuber that decided to make music. That That's a big difference right there. Uh, so you really get high quality with this one. Uh, as, and as I said... It's a really cool sound that I think that more bands should explore. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about uh, the releases that they have done. Uh, because uh, that's the good stuff, right? Isn't it? Uh, they, they started in 2018 with a five-track EP, which was called In the Sunshine. And uh, they had the most amazing part tracks, like the title track... Uh, in the sunshine, uh, it got some slide guitar, it got some Americana, just as we talked about, and just some great, fantastic dynamics. B- because you got the high parts and f- and uh, just rocking out, but then you got the sl- a little bit slower parts, which are creating this tension in the song, and and just gives the chorus and all of that even more impact, uh, which just were so great. But yeah, the the EP has hasn't just got one track, right? It got it got way more tracks like uh, "Old for New" and uh, "Flash Food," which are fantastic tracks. And a fun track, fun fact on this uh, release was that they featured an old friend of Rob's, which is uh, named Lee Anderton, uh, which owns the uh, music shop uh, Andertons. Back in Guildfordshire in England. I cannot take it anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Uh, talk about ask what. Uh, this, uh, that, uh, what? <laughs> and my English. No. What, what, I, what was I thinking? And was I drunk when I made this episode? Honestly, <laughs> in some parts, I, I'm almost sounding drunk. But, but I hope I don't sound drunk anymore. And uh, if I would sound like this in an episode today, I would probably re-record. <laughs> because, my god. Uh, hopefully I don't say ah as much anymore. Uh, don't, uh, don't don't uh, drink as much anymore. <laughs> I don't drink at all, even though I work <laughs> as a bartender. Yeah, that, that's that's uh, irony. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But but it, it's fun to look back because and, and my intro is way different as well. Hello there, metalheads, and welcome to another episode of Metal Verbalizer. Hello, Mister <laughs> Nest, there, right there. Yeah, we didn't comment it uh, uh, earlier, but uh, we we also had like uh, the intro music uh, right in the beginning as well. Yeah, exactly. At the time, we we don't have that anymore. No, uh, we have mooted a little bit, and uh, yeah. Nowadays, we have decided to move it into in a little bit into the episode, so we have a little bit of a snippet where we introduce the episode, so you guys. Get to know straight away what's what the episode is gonna be about, and uh, then we get into the intro music and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, in the beginning, but it's not like right away, like we had it exactly during those episodes. Yeah. It's more to get get give an introduction of the episode straight away, uh, because uh, I think that's necessary, and it's a little bit of more of a beautiful way of re- editing, in my opinion. Yeah. Because that that is something to touch upon as well. This when we're doing this, this is learned by doing. We don't have any sort of like media training or uh, journalist education or editing 
uh, educations or anything like that either. Th this yeah, is, I mean, this is learned by doing. Yeah, exactly. And that was kind of like thing with those like earlier episodes as well that we had never done anything like that before. Yeah, exactly. So we were kind of like just going head first into it and kind of like see what happens. And I mean, I did I did have have the blog earlier uh, before doing the podcast, but. I mean that yeah. that's a very very different thing. I mean like how you're working and how you're making the episodes or uh, the blog posts uh, it it works very very differently. So it was still like very new. Yeah, yeah, and back then it was more of analyzing a an album or an EP yeah, or, or a new song or something. Yeah, exactly. Rather it was more than like uh, reviewing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. More re reviewing rather than uh, actually introducing people to a new band. Yeah, and I, and I was also doing, like, you know, more famous stuff as well. So yeah. Kind of like mixing it at that time, but now we're a little bit more specified to the uh, kind of like underground music and more like Yeah, and I, and nice I, think, I think that I actually enjoy that more. Yeah. To, to make episodes about newer and uh, underrated bands uh yeah i mean i i, I tend to have the kind of like listening habits as well uh you know like i yeah. nowadays i tend to prefer probably even to listen to newer bands rather than older bands uh, which you know th this doesn't really speak for that but <laughs> <laughs> th th this kind of speaks against what i was just saying but uh yeah, yeah. That, like i think so that Usually, I tend to listen to a lot of new music, like in general, not only well, like I mean, in regards yes, we, to the podcast. We enjoy listening to new music, but that doesn't mean that we don't listen to old music as well. Yeah, uh, exactly. we still do exactly. that as well. But there is so much good new music. Yeah, I mean, I I think when it comes to, like uh, new music, I think I'm more usually more excited uh, when a newer band releases a new album rather than like when an older like 80s band for example releases a new album yeah i uh, mean uh, acdc has done uh, has already done 13 albums that sound the same so if you listen to the back in black <laughs> record you know what power up is gonna sound like yeah pretty much and uh i think that that is that that can be applied to sabaton as well if you have uh, yeah. listened to Primo Victoria, you pretty much uh, know what Great War is going to sound like. Yeah, to be honest, those albums are quite different, though. <laughs> Maybe an over-exaggeration, but you, you get the point. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Sabaton has, has also become a band that has really found their sound and uh, has noticed that it works. They have found a so sound that works, and uh, they have gone for it. Yeah, yeah. And I they mean, like stay the, true to their sound. Yeah, and I mean, like those earlier records, like uh, you know, Fist for Fight or Melizer, as it's also kind of known as, uh, or like Primo Victoria as well. Like you can really notice on those albums that that they were significantly more influenced by bands like uh, Accept and Warlock. On those albums yeah it was much yeah. less uh synths and yeah they uh, were, that's where it's like uh, more guitar driven music now they had a synth but but it was way more like uh clear double bass and more like heavier riffs in general yeah, and i think it, yeah they have has synths uh, but i think it was way more attention to the riffs on the guitar yeah yeah exactly rather than a clear synth line that that was like backing up the music like it is today yeah and, and that was why i really liked their their cover uh of kingdom come yeah by manowar yeah be because it, it was very different very different to their other like regular stuff when they do their own music so that's why i like that like like cool effects on the guitars and uh, that sort of stuff. Not not as much since. Uh, so that why why I like that. Yeah, and then I guess we can uh, check a, a little bit newer episode that I did. 
not so long ago with yeah, I the guess, electrocutioner. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, that that would be interesting so, to see how everything, how you have improved. And now we're going to yeah, see exactly. the new editing. So I think that we're going to hear a difference in the audio as well. Uh, you're yeah, using the same so. microphone, but uh, yeah. on my part, I've hopefully gotten a little bit better at uh, editing the microphone itself. And uh, so hopefully it's going to sound even a little bit better. So we're going to check it out. Yeah. Verbalizer's podcast. I'm Johan Verbalizer, and today I have a new great band to recommend. Electrocutioner. Electrocutioner is a thrash metal band from New York, USA. The band was formed during the COVID pandemic in the year of 2020. Uh, since then the band has released a few singles, two EPs and a full length album. So even if it was only three years ago that Electrocutioner started, the band has surely been active during that time. When it comes to Electrocutioner's main influences, they are very influenced by old school thrash metal bands, such as for example Whiplash, Megadeth, and especially like Show No Mercy era Slayer. Uh, one of the band's biggest influences when it comes to like uh, when it comes to, like the songwriting and just the uh, the overall atmosphere uh, of Electrocutioner uh, is the band Exorcist and the album Nightmare Theater. Uh, there's something that I find really interesting, uh, cool, and uh, original about Electrocutioner as a band. Uh, they, they have uh, they have this kind of like uh, uh, they're like a very cool atmospheric style. Uh, I would I would probably like uh, describe it as, uh, which uh, I mean, uh, which I have a kind of a hard time to really compare to any other thrash band. Really, uh, I mean, I I would say that kind of like Electrocutioner's uh, kind of atmospheric style and kind of like uh, horror-esque uh, and atmospheric approach to the thrash metal uh, I, I, I think it's pretty pretty unique uh, in my opinion I mean I, I, as I was saying it's like I, I don't really know any band off, off the top of my head uh, that really has that kind of like approach which is really really cool and for example the intro to the band's EP 48 hours till termination uh, reminds me a lot of the kind of like uh, style of uh, of kind of like uh, old school horror movie soundtracks uh, with a kind of like um, I guess you could call it like a synth wave sound. Uh, I mean, both EPs from uh, Electrocutioner have a lot of instrumental tracks uh, that have a kind of horror style. Uh, some of these kind of like synth wave stuff, but also like uh, uh, especially from like the second EP, you have this uh, a track that is like a a horror type sample with like screams and stuff like that uh, and I mean uh, it, it it gives it a really interesting type of thrash metal I think uh, with that kind of like uh, again like atmospheric uh, very horror inspired synth wave stuff uh, I would also say that uh, uh, <clears throat> one thing that I'm noticing straight away uh, is the tempo yeah. of the speech because I think that I think it has to do a lot of about that we have a clear idea of what about what we want to be said. Uh, so there is more structure in the episode. We know what we want to talk about. Uh, so I think that's the whole reason why it's a little bit more tempo. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's like uh, since since we had already done so many episodes before this one, for example, uh, like I I kind of knew more what what to kind of like expect from myself with this episode compared to the Hellfected episode, for example, which was yeah. the first one. Uh, like it was the first episode I ever did, so I didn't really have anything to compare it to from before that. So it was kind of like a new thing, but. At this point, I, I had done so many episodes before that I kind of knew what I was, kinda like what I wanted, what what to kind of like expect, which I think is is a big part of uh, what differs the two from each other. Absolutely. 
I think it's for sure. And then I would say that the sound is a little bit better uh, because we have more like we have less background noises and yeah, more even so volumes and all of that is is much better, in my opinion. Then uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. Th then again, it can be uh, improved a lot, and uh, I will probably take uh, some courses to learn more about sound editing. Because because really through through the years and why it was a little scuffed in the beginning was because it is only us two. We don't have any yeah. edit. We're not just uh, like uh, hosts. Uh, we are editors. We are social media. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing everything. <laughs> uh, we don't. We do everything. Uh, we record the episodes, we write the episodes, we edit the episodes, or I do the editing. Uh, you do the so social media thing, yeah. uh, since that's your responsibility. Uh, and we contact the bands ourselves, we pick the bands ourselves. Uh, we make sure that it uh, comes up to uh, Bus Brown, which we are using. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, unless uh, bands are contacting us and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that. that happens <laughs> sometimes, which we yeah, absolutely yeah. love. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's kind of like uh, we obviously have a lot of bands that we can make episodes about, but uh, like when bands are contacting us and showing like an interest in being featured and stuff like that, uh, we will obviously uh, have that kind of like a priority. Uh, so like if, if a band contacts us, and asks us if we want to do a, an episode about them. If you want to do it, which we we, we definitely will, uh, they will definitely have that as like a priority. Yeah, we we will all always uh, prioritize suggestions. Yeah, when uh, bands contact us, or if anybody contacts us about checking out a band, we will always yeah. check it out and uh, see what we can do about it. Then again, if we don't really vibe with the music, we might not make an episode about it because uh, to some extent, the whole purpose is that we find small bands or newer bands that we do like. And, yeah, uh, that, we, that we like or that we like generally believe in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can always be sure that if we have made an episode, we do like the band. Yes, and uh, like Definitely. I oft like like I often say in my episodes, especially with the top five lists, a lot of those uh, uh, songs I have added to my everyday's playlist. Uh, that that is uh, as of right now uh, over a day in hours. It's like past twenty four hours at this point with the uh, music, and. A lot of that music, uh, hours of that music, is songs from bands that we have uh, featured on our podcast. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, that's uh, that's a lot of cases. Like, it, it's not that we only like make episodes and then kind of like move on. Uh, like, we we are making episodes about bands that we do listen to and yeah. that we like, and that we have also kept listening to after making the episodes and stuff For like sure. that. So. So it's not just that we're like making an episode and just then just move on. Like yeah. we we are like fans of the music that we're talking about. Yeah, and and I guess that I think that is important because it's much easier to get give an honest review of something that you enjoy rather than something that you don't like. Yeah, I mean we feel that it's like it's both easier and it's more fun in my yeah. opinion. Uh, you know, like, that's why we're not, like, doing reviews either, uh, because, like, we just want to, like, talk about the stuff we do like and exactly. talk about, like, why we like it, rather than, like, trying to make some analysis or review. Yeah, and it, nowadays it's much more of a, we're introducing a band. We don't yeah. really... I, I, I mean, we talk about the band band's music and stuff and we want to say a few words about the songs and stuff like that so it's partially in review to some extent but 
the main focus is to introduce a new band. Yeah. I guess, I guess that's our uh, main focus. Yeah. But I want to check uh, another episode. Yeah. I mean, I, mean uh, I made an episode like a month ago uh, about a band called Allegia of Madness. Uh, I mentioned uh, them before in this episode as well. And uh, they make a more symphonic metal, uh, which I have enjoyed more and more because of this podcast, actually. Uh, symphonic metal wasn't really something that I listened to before, but I've start, started to take a liking to it because of uh, that I've reached many of those kinds of bands nowadays. Uh, but yeah, we're going to listen to uh, the episode uh, of, uh, or a little bit of uh, the episode from uh, Elegia of Madness. Alright, Metalheads! Welcome to another episode of Metal Verlizer's podcast. Do we like speed? Do we like angelic vocals? Do we like down-tuned guitars? Of course we do. This week I'm bringing you the symphonic metal act, Elegy of Madness. The band was founded back in 2006 in Italy, and the name came to be during one of their rehearsals. They had several options for names, but in the end they came up with the word Elegy. Since they were at the time very influenced by progressive metal, they decided to combine Elegy with Madness. Madness came as I understand it from uh, the way they were producing some parts of their music at the time. Some of the band's influences are Rammstein, Cradle of Filth, Epica, Rotten Christ, Paradise Lost. It is really a mis- mix of genres. We got everything from Epica, which play progressive metal, to Rotten Christ, with, uh, play, which play more black metal. I think that brings a very interesting mix of sounds to the band. One of the first bands that came to my mind when I heard Elegy of Madness was Nightwish. I think that it, they have similarities in the main vocals that often become more operatic than regular vocals, if you know what I mean. These angelic vocals are then backed up by growl, actually, in many cases. And uh, this is, to me, one of the heaviest combinations imaginable. I don't think that uh, I have had any bands at all yet that has uh, mixed in growl in their music, but in this case, the growl is used more as a supporting vocal and not a main vocal necessarily which i prefer it is more like using salt when cooking too much makes it taste like shit but the right amount makes everything better when asked the band uh, didn't really think that they sound like any other band uh, a lot a lot also since the members has so many different influences quoting the band maybe We can be compared to Elaine, but we are constantly trying to have a unique style and make a distinctive mark in the music scene, end of quote. With their latest album, they have gone for a different image, this time a much darker theme. The album cover cover is based of a skull and some golden lines on a black background. This is also to emphasize emphasize the darker mood behind the lyrics. The lyrics are, as I understand it, about the so-called master number 11. More specific, the different meanings of the number. That's very interesting. Uh, and once again, we can hear a quite quite big difference. Yeah, uh, for sure. Much better sound from the microphone, for example. It's still the same microphone. The same microphone that I use today, this little guy, uh, the Elvis style of a microphone, Uh, but the editing is way different. I use a completely different noise gate, and uh, I have improved on on the equalizer and that sort of stuff. But but not only that technical part as well, it's once again much more structured, and uh, I have a clear like picture of what I want to say and uh, that sort of sort of a thing. Yeah, because the tempo is quite different as well. I, I guess that's a lot 
and now now with this episode i'm not uh, a part of the ass squad anymore as much <laughs> at least uh now i said it just because as much exactly but i mean i think that our english just because we have used it so much in the podcast i think that our english has gotten way better as well yeah so so i think that's a big part of why the tempo has increased a lot yeah i mean it's not only really like being better at english either it's just like about you know uh speaking in that kind of like context yeah you, you have something that you know you want to say you have yeah. a clear structure of it that that's gonna help a lot yeah so so and, and that makes it more fun because you have a clear picture and uh, you know what you want to say and uh, i think that the bands enjoy it a lot more as well because we we include the bands much more in the way we make the episodes because nowadays yes with this new structure that we have we con we always contact the band first to find out more information yeah and uh, to find their own words on uh, the band's sound and etc cetera, etc cetera, and uh, how they would describe their own image i think yeah, that's very I mean, important yeah i think it's like the, the kind of idea behind that is basically that we we, we want to introduce the bands in, in the sense like that it is and like you know the the, the kind of like facts not like what we feel or what we think that the band might be about like we, yeah. we want to actually present like th this is like what the band wants to uh you know like uh, uh, sound like or this is the kind of like approach the band uh, has in mind uh you know like kind of doing that instead of like what we think that it might be yeah definitely uh because and i just a part of including the band we ask the band what do you think about yourself uh what plans do you have for the future and uh, like what do you think about your sound how did you come up with your sound how did you come up with a band name and that yeah. sort of thing to, to include the band in the production uh i think that's much more fun both both for us and the band yeah and i mean like with questions like for example the, the band names and stuff like that is that like partly it's like we, we ask those questions and kind of like make the episode based on those questions mm. uh, because it is things that we wonder like yeah. we, we wonder too so we're thinking exactly. like yeah that, that might be something that like our listeners might want to know as well and also it's like kind of like bad Deciding on a band name, and not least nowadays, like it, it can be pretty hard. Uh, so it's it's kind of interesting yeah. to hear how other bands have kind of like come up with it. Yeah, and the, those like short band names uh, that has a good ring to it. Yeah, most of them are taken. Yeah, but I mean, it's like I, I've uh, I've talked about many, many, many times uh, in other episodes, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, but it's, it's kind of like names that has, you know, two words and then kind of like combined together to kind of like form its own word. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, Sarkater, for example, the Swedish band yeah, uh, that I made Warsenow. an episode about. Yeah. Uh, Which is I'm, a very I mean, good Sarkater example. being like... A uh, mix of uh, sarcophago and uh, creator, but like if you put it together, it be becomes yeah. sarcator. And I mean, or, or war Hellfe arsenal, yeah. war and arsenal. Yeah, I mean, hellfected is another example, like hell infected. Yeah, and also like you say, uh, war arsenal is another example, war arsenal. Yeah, and I mean, sp speaking of uh, war arsenal, uh, you you wanna you wanna check out the, another episode. That was exactly what I was thinking. You read yeah. my mind there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a little bit of an anecdote because we did make a 
an interview with uh, Matt Warsenal. Um, and you asked uh, him if he had any fun stories from uh, their tours. So that's what we're going to listen to right now. Uh, so, uh, is there any like uh, funny tour anecdote or something like that uh, that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, there, there a lot of stuff has a happened to us uh, through the years. But uh, if something I think is funny, maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> stupid. But um, <laughs> we were uh, 2016. Uh, we we're in Mexico City. Uh, we're actually on tour in Mexico. Uh, for we we've released our album Bar Barn Burner a couple a couple months uh, before that, and um, Enforcer uh, is on tour for their album uh, From Beyond, and they're doing two Mexican dates, so we're uh, supporting them on those dates and doing a couple dates on our own. We had like uh, I think maybe nine eight or nine gigs, something like that. But anyway. Um, we're in Mexico City and we're staying uh, at the promoter's house. Uh, she was asking us. We were sleeping there. And uh, if you've never been to Mexico City, uh, it it seems it looks like a war zone. I mean, there's barbed wire everywhere, walls. Um, there's dogs everywhere. Every windows has bars, so people you know can't come in at night and steal stuff. It really looks like a war zone, and you know there's all this due to the cartel um, killings and all that stuff. Actually, one of her gig was canceled uh, because there was a drive-by shooting uh, a few days before we were playing the venue. So um, anyways, with all of that in mind, we had our drummer Antoine at the time. He was always the last one to go to sleep. And um, he would smoke cigarettes beside the window. And at some point, he went into the shower. And we thought about something. Me and Francis were like, we're gonna take a cell phone, put some gunshot effects, and hide the cell phone beside the window. So we do that, we hide the phone. It's and the video we found, it's like gunshots, but they seem like they're far, but not too far. Like it's not close, but it, it sounds like gunshots in the city. It's it was perfect. And we fake like we went to sleep. So he would come back, smoke his cigarette, hear gunshot. So at first it wasn't sure. I was like, guys, guys. And I was like pretending to sleep. Uh, yeah, uh, yo, they're, they're one shot. I'm serious. Oh uh, no, you're probably dreaming. Go back to sleep. And so he's like on his own and he's super stressed out. And um, at some point, and we did that for like two straight days and he never noticed. And at some point, my bassist caught him calling his girlfriend and he's like, I don't know if I'm going to make it home. It seems like there's a cartel war or something. Have you heard something on the news? I don't know what's going on. So it was it was super funny for for us not to him and uh we actually we never told him uh it was a prank so uh if antoine if you're listening right now uh we got you but uh if not uh <laughs> we 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 thought it was super funny uh, and uh, i still do i still think <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love that story uh... <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how they come up came up with the idea of yeah now we're gonna prank our drummer with gunshots. I, I guess <laughs> well, well yeah Matt thought it looked like a war zone so I mean I guess it made sense in that way. Yeah, and I mean it's, the thing is like I I I told Matt like you know I asked him about it like you know over over like a text like you know for for the episode. Uh, like, do, do you, do you want to, do I have any, like, fun stories or something you want to wanna tell? And and the thing is, he didn't actually tell me that he hadn't uh, told him that it was a prank. So I didn't actually know that before he said it in the episode <laughs> either. Yeah, that's so much better that they never told him. Yeah. But, yeah, but I, I mean, mean, that, this episode and that part of the this interview gave birth to our concept that we call tour stories. Yes. Yes, it did. Uh, I think that's that that has become even more fun to make rather than just regular interviews. Yeah, I mean, so so uh, indirectly, uh, Matt gave us the idea uh, of yeah. uh, 
of uh, doing like the kind of tour story things that we have done definitely uh, more uh, so like that that is uh, like indirectly thanks to matt from Warsnow. yeah so uh, if you listen to this uh, matt thank you yeah thank you so much thank you for giving us that idea and yeah because... absolutely fantastic story with the you yeah because the be, because the thing uh, he said uh, later uh, w- was that uh, he, he commented that he, he have uh, like enough stories from that tour uh, to fill its own episode uh, and yeah. and that, that that comment what was what gave us the idea and i mean speaking of that uh, we also did that episode yeah absolutely uh, that tour story episode with matt about Warsnell uh, and about that whole tour uh, that they did in Mexico. So uh, if you want to hear more from that tour, uh, more similar stories uh, like that one, uh, we have a full episode about it. Yeah, and to some extent, that tour seems to be a real shit show for the band. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It, it, it to, seemed to pretty some, chaotic. To some extent, uh, very literally as well. Yeah. And uh, if you want to know what I mean with that, you have to listen to the actual episode, yeah. which uh, you can access on all of the platforms that we our episodes uh, exist on. All right, so uh, li- like we said, uh, the episode with uh, Matt and that sort of thing that we just listened to, that, that uh, gave birth to our concept, Tour Stories, and uh, one, the first Tour Stories episode that we did was with the Hell Affected and Thrasher Wolf. We had we had both uh, Liam and uh, Daniel Lucas with us uh, because that was something that was requested from uh, Daniel. I think it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, to, to do with both of them. Yeah, yeah, uh, and he said something like, uh, "Okay, lads, then you have to bring in Liam as well." <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they had a chore and, uh, that uh, they and it was made a great together. idea. <laughs> it was a fantastic idea, in my opinion, uh, because uh, it uh, became maybe one of the absolute best episodes that we have ever recorded, it, or it, at it, least it, funniest. It, it it was hilarious to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, it was not. It's not an episode that is. For children, definitely uh, beware of uh, swear words of uh, <laughs> different kinds. Uh, so uh, a disclaimer of a foul language might be in order before we play play, play on this. Uh, <laughs> but I think that we uh, we're gonna take a look at the first. Uh, the story that they had uh, for us. It's uh, pretty late in the episode, but we call this story Wan Wanker. <laughs> Mate, it's so hard, yeah. And then fucking Jack and Chris nearly break the fucking van. It turns out the van didn't lock through the whole tour of using it. Yeah, uh, excuse me? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> holy shit! Fucking... I, um... Dan, I remember on on tour, Dan, so we were driving past someone and the other guys were in the van and Dan was like, Van Wankers! Dan didn't (laughs) realise on the left of our friends was a dude, an elderly gentleman with his van. (laughs) Dan made eye contact at this bloke and just fucking shit himself. I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean you were talking about that. (laughs) Yeah, someone wound, someone wound up the window before I could say, no, I didn't mean you. So all the guy literally heard from me was, Van Wanker. And then, <laughs> and then me in the mirror going. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm literally driving off thinking, this guy is going to have a hateful day. Because I think I just called him Van yeah, Wanker. <laughs> I've had enough of my life. I really want to end it. And there's Dan just like, Van Wanker! (laughs) (laughs) I'm just fucking rude for fucking everyone. He's like, oh, man. (laughs) At least it makes for a good story in the end. That'll 
Next to coleslaw, that will always remain, I think, <laughs> a, uh, a, a, the best course. Yeah, I guess Daniel m mentioned a pretty <laughs> funny story there at the end as well, uh, which was uh, a little earlier in this uh, episode. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about coleslaw and uh, van wankers. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love this story. And... Uh, <laughs> When you've talked to these guys, you really feel like this is a story that can just can happen to these guys. <laughs> and I feel like to some extent that these stories are so crazy that to some extent it feels like uh, in the good old days with the uh, Motley Crue and all of these guys. Maybe yeah, they not were, they, that extreme with like yeah, they were pretty uh, alcohol extreme. <laughs> abuse and uh, drug abuse and that sort of stuff, but weird shit seems to happen to these guys. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, that, and I don't understand how. Yeah, that was, that was certainly a very, very funny episode to make. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and we have another story that we're going to take a listen to that... Uh, I've called Wolf Guy, <laughs> but which is a pretty funny yeah. story as well. So I think that we're going to get straight into it and listen yeah. to this story as well. I, and I remember Christ. looking at Jack and Jack, Jack looked at me and I remember think, I, I said to him, I said, mate, are we feeling nervous for the first time in ages? And he looked at me and just went, yes, I'm, fe I'm <laughs> shooting myself now. And it, because we realized it was actually a 150 capacity venue and the, at the end there was 225 people in that venue oh jesus christ it was, fucking, it was fucking insanity we had people turning up in fucking wolf masks and thrasher wolf long sleeves i i honestly i've never had a reception like that before it it, it was fucking it was maniacal i remember walking yeah. through this sea of people like not being able to like even crawl like a like an inch and and just thinking, fucking hell, we've now got to play to this 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 crowd that are like packed yeah. out of the raft. I'm like, oh my god! But that's insane. just fucking awesome when people like go with a theme as well. It's like when Kiss uh, had the audience to paint their faces with yeah. like stars on their eyes and that shit. It, that that's just that dedication is just awesome. I remember one guy. We uh, we were playing the show um, uh, during a thousand eyes just before the song the guy one of the guys in the wolf mask came up on stage and we we're like hey yeah that's really cool you know this this guy's you know yeah. he's really he's really rocking the sort of the thrash wolf style and so we were we we, we had him on he was having the time of his life and uh, like, like introducing to the audience and then i gave him a pat on the back to to try and get him off stage the, the guy out of the wolf mask, we patted him on the back to try and like get him off so we could start <laughs> He didn't get the message. Oh. And so he stayed up there. And so me and Jack looked at each other, we was like, you know what, fuck it, let him stay on. Like he, he's gonna really up things up. And so there we are doing a thousand eyes, and he's banging his fucking head so fast the wolf mask just like flies off into the crowd. <laughs> and so he's like he's like proper giving it some. We're like, you know what, fuck it, like and so we finished the song. <laughs> and like we, we all give him like a massive hug each and we're like you know like they get yeah. into the crowd and, like just in time for ruins but like that'll always yeah. stick with me because like yeah. it was the first time someone's jumped up on the stage with us and i, I feel like that's an experience he's going to remember and I feel like it's yeah. experience like that yeah. really gonna matter in the end what is... yeah people <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a good one i just love that part with the 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 Try to pat him on the back and like, yeah, fun, fun, yeah, great. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Like, but get the fuck off the stage right now. Yeah, but but Dan Dan is also <laughs> a really really cool guy. So so yeah. he's just like deciding like, you you know what, w w whatever, like g go ahead. Yeah, like go well, for it. Let's just go with it. Yeah, and see what happens. <laughs> but but I I really think that it's, that is a part of the show as well. I think that he. Him on the stage, just banging his head like Daniel said, and the the mask flies off, and he he he's really <laughs> into the music. I yeah. think that to some extent amped up the audience as well. Yeah. So uh, 
so to some extent that sort of thing can be a big su success yeah i think so too yeah but i think that's just a fantastic story uh, <laughs> yeah now, now this was only like two episodes or two stories from this episode the whole episode is like uh, over one hour and 20 minutes long so yeah, uh, and, and this is it's definitely packed with with the stories like that <laughs> yeah uh, when i i'm supposed to pick out stuff like this i have a hard time to pick because every single yeah. story is so good and <laughs> once yeah. again i just want to thank matt to give us the idea yeah. of uh, making tour stories he didn't say make tour stories but he gave us such a good story that we wanted to make this. Yeah, kind yeah, of like, I, like, like I said earlier, he, he didn't directly give us the idea, but he, he definitely indirectly gave it to us. Yeah, the, the, story, the story that he came up with, and it, with you asking the question if he had yeah. any good anecdotes, uh, so that he told us that story, uh, that really was the birth of uh, our concept, tour stories. Yeah. And uh, for the future, I think that tour stories is going to be more of what we do rather than regular interviews. Because, yeah. because of that, when we have that structured introduction ep episode, uh, it's, it's, it is sort of like a written interview when we contact the band. So a lot of the questions that are quite interesting to get from the band we have already answered in our introduction episode so it, it isn't really yeah. that interesting to make another interview rather than making a chore stories episode so we get a picture of what touring is actually like for a smaller band yeah and and, and something they will notice also in in these kind of like tour story episodes is that is that we are also asking questions so it kind of becomes yeah uh, many times like sort of a tour story episode but it's also like a tour story slash interview uh, yeah, because, because we, we're, we're we definitely ask questions stuff like that anyway um, so, it's yeah. always like follow-up questions on the stories and yeah i know i asked uh, matt uh, a question about uh, how uh, how they uh, did get around when touring did they have like a van like in uh, Thrasher Wolf's case, uh, which they told us so beautifully about. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, and then Matt uh, like told us that they ordered like a taxi of some sort, and uh, they had like uh, had like to the the car was like the taxi that came in was too small, <laughs> so they had to have like all the equipment in their laps and sort of that sort of thing so everything barely fit in the car and luckily they borrowed a drum kit from the venue so they only like needed to have the cymbals with them or something like that yeah but then again and yeah, usually see... they usually the speaker boxes uh, for guitars and bass is also borrowed from the venue but amps weigh a ton. Uh, guitars take a lot of space. Yeah, and I mean they they, they still had to sit like <laughs> yeah, all exactly. the stuff in the car. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's very funny when when Matt uh, tells about it. Yeah, exactly. So and that that is something that you can hear about in the chore stories episode that we did with yes. Matt. Uh, and I think that's really interesting because these smaller bands. They don't. They don't really have a tour bus because they don't have the money for it. Because a tour bus is crazy expensive, or a nightliner, like uh, some of, some call it. It because it, apparently it is. It takes a lot of money to have a tour bus. Yeah. And really, it is only the big bands that have the funds, like Sabaton, Priest, Accept, Iron Maiden. It's only these bands that has 
the funds to do it. So, and that's why we, the smaller bands comes into situations where they have a, a car that is way too small for both the crew and, uh, or well, the band members and uh, the equipment. I said the crew, but once again, these ba- these smaller bands doesn't really have a crew. Uh, it's just the band. But I think that uh, we have talked a l- we have uh, viewed back, look back on what we have done so far, and yeah. uh, now I think that uh, the only thing left is uh, to talk about uh, what we can expect in the future. So like like we t- touched upon a little bit. Uh, we're probably not gonna make that many uh, interviews because it feels yeah, like no. we have done most of it in our introduction episode with the written questions that we ask the bands. Uh, so we will, when we do these extra episodes, we will probably make more tour stories rather than interviews. And, yeah, which uh, is also a thing that we we are, we are also planning to do significantly more uh, tour yeah. story episodes. Uh, in the future, uh, I we, mean, we it, just it, we just hope that we have enough time because I, yeah. I work a full time job and you're you're studying full time. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, mean, we, we we can't we can't really promise uh, when or like how yeah. often uh, for numerous reasons, but uh, we are definitely gonna plan on doing it more. Yeah, unfortunately, we only have twenty four hours a day, <laughs> yeah. and uh, with a full time job, it's it's a hard time to find the time to edit these episodes because these extra episodes take a lot longer to edit, especially with uh, the uh, new way that we record them. Yeah. Because we have a new way to record these episodes right now, uh, which takes a lot longer to edit, but the quality is going to be better. So... uh, I think that uh, we're going to have to live with it taking longer to edit and make the yeah. episodes uh, because the quality is going to be a lot better and I'm way more comfortable with that. Uh, and I I just have to find the time to uh, get these episodes in. Yeah. And when one thing as well with my job is that I'm working shift, so sometimes... Uh, if somebody calls in sick or something, uh, I can uh, sometimes just get to know the day before that, okay, I know that you're off work tomorrow, but uh, can you come in and work anyways? That sort of thing can happen, which is uh, unfortunate for me. We have an uh, extra episode lined up that is going to be released soon. Uh, which you're going to have to follow us on our social medias to find out about. Yes. Uh, I were supposed to be uh, a part of that episode, but I had to get into work. And uh, so it's just going to be with uh, you one. But yeah. I think it's going to be an awesome episode anyway. Yeah, I think uh, so too. It's, it's um, Speaking of like doing more Toy Story episodes, uh, we do have this one. Uh, yeah, as kind exactly. of like a tour story interview with with the band, uh, that uh, yeah, I I don't know uh, if we really decided when to release it yet, but uh, definitely soon. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, in the near future, absolutely, yeah. because uh, everything is recorded uh, and uh, done that way. Uh, we just have to find a good time to release it, basically. And I have to edit everything. Um, but but yeah, speaking of tour stories as well, for the future, so something that we have talked a little bit about is to uh, record a live tour stories on uh, a stage. This is nothing that we have. We don't have a band for the episode that we're going to make. And uh, we have sort of a venue in mind. Yeah, uh, that we're gonna use. We don't uh, know who or when, but uh, we have a pretty good idea where. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we have a few other ideas of where we could potentially uh, record these 
uh, yeah. live with, with the band's present, uh, which is something that I'm very excited about. Yeah, that, that's the idea. That That is something we have planned right now. Uh, it's not really anything that is confirmed either, but uh, it's, uh, it's definitely something that is uh, in the planning right now. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think I think uh, that's going to be much more fun to to uh, record and make an episode because uh, you can interact with the band in a much more different way. I mean, uh, even uh, with uh, this episode, when you and I are sitting and recording this episode, we're like 20 kilometers away from each other. <laughs> yeah. So uh, even uh, for us to... We don't really have a studio where we record these. We we record them out of our homes. Yeah. Uh, because uh, as of right now, uh, and it's going to continue like that for a, a lot of time in the future as well, uh, we do this just for fun. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't earn any... We, do it, we don't do it for uh, money or anything like that. Uh, we don't even earn any money on the, these episodes at all. No, we do actually. not. So uh, I think that's a, a pretty good evidence for that. Uh, we do it for fun. And yeah. we uh, do it because we enjoy the music. Uh, yeah, and we have, a, we have a, a very like genuine passion towards yeah, exactly. metal and the music. So that's why, we, that's why we started doing it. And that's why we've kept doing it. Yeah, exactly. It, because uh, if we were looking, were to look back in the days where you, when you ended your blog, uh, we decided that we wanted to do something together. Yeah. Because that's much more fun. And uh, then uh, we decided to make a podcast because three years ago, it, it was a format that was became more and more popular. And I would say that it's still... It's a format that becomes more and more popular. Uh, yeah. And uh, so we decided to make a podcast together. And uh, we uh, wanted it to be about music. Uh, but we did. We came up with the idea that we didn't really want to... We didn't really see a point in making another podcast that we're going to talk about. Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, Judas Priest, Ozzy Osbourne. There's there isn't really any point because those bands they already have uh, the exposure that they need. So uh, and since we knew that you had the uh, contact with Hellfected and uh, Thrasher Wolf during your blog days, and uh, they yeah. were a smaller band. Yeah, yeah, at least Hellfected, I know. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so we realized that giving newer bands and smaller bands a place to be heard and a forum where they can eventually get more exposure. Yeah, and also there's, there's something that we, we are talking about in the uh, upcoming episode that we talked yeah. about, uh, the Tour Story interview episode. Uh, we actually talked about that thing that uh, it's also about like showing that like the 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 older eighties metal bands, for example, they 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 start to like uh, become older. Uh, let's be honest about it. Yeah. Uh, and kind of what we are doing is like trying to show that the underground, the new wave, the new bands also has some great music, but unfortunately is often overshadowed uh, by these more popular bands yeah like, like, you know, what, it, like we, if we were to look at spotify uh, back in the days uh, at least when we made the episode about hellfected i don't even think that they had uh, uh, an average of uh, a thousand listeners a month yeah and if, if, if you like look at the, the metal magazines like you know metal hammer etc uh, they're they're usually writing a lot about the the really really popular bands and the really really famous uh, metal and rock bands and you know I I understand why they're doing it but uh, at the same time 
it made sense to us to do it more about underground and more about new wave bands. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I actually looked up uh, Hell Affected right now, and uh, they uh, they have uh, a, an average of uh, 270 listeners a month. So talk about an underrated band. Yeah, they're definitely underrated. <laughs> that, that, that is so underrated. And they deserve so much more. Yeah, they're great, great musicians and uh, super, super cool people. So yeah, yeah, and uh, I, and uh, one thing that is important to mention that these guys, both Hell Affected and Thrasher Wolf, they have uh, been supporting us and helping us to support us uh, through the years, all yeah. up, pretty much uh, ever since we made the episodes about them. And uh, yeah, exactly. The same I mean, can be said uh, about Murdoch uh, 104. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there, there, there are many bands. Uh, there are several bands that we've talked about that uh, have uh, liked our stuff and uh, supported us by uh, yeah. commenting and liking throughout the years, such as, like we mentioned, uh, like Hellfected, Thrasher Wolf, uh, Murdoch 104, and uh, Oliver from Murdoch. Yeah. Uh, and also the band uh, Cask. Uh, yeah, has absolutely. also liked our stuff and been very supportive of us. Of us. Murdoch, and, and, uh, he and was uh, very supportive even way before we made an episode about him yeah. and uh, the band. But yeah, so, we, we, obvi we obviously appreciate that incredibly much. Yeah, and uh, a huge thanks to everybody that has, uh, both the bands and uh, everybody else that has supported us through uh, these years. A, a huge thanks to everybody, all of you. Uh, we are very appreciated, appreciative of every single one of you, and yeah. uh, I hope that uh, you want to follow us uh, through three more years of uh, verbalizing new bands. Yeah, because we have definitely many, many more bands to verbalize and to recommend. Yeah, definitely, and uh, we we don't have any plans at all of slowing down. No. Uh, we might not have time to uh, make episodes in the same tempo that we have uh, done before because of, we have day jobs and that sort of thing that we have to prioritize. Uh, since we, we don't make any money on this podcast, and uh, I guess that would be a goal for the future to work with uh, this sort of thing full time. That would be yeah. awesome if we could do that. And uh, get a studio where we can actually record these episodes. I, I just, I, I can only see this uh, podcast evolving at this point. And uh, we want to, like we said, make much more tour stories. We're going to probably contact bands that we have made episodes about before. See if they want to come back to the podcast and... Uh, talk about uh, their music maybe they have released a new album or or something like that and then uh, tell some fun stories yeah so that that is something that we want to do much more in the future and of course much much more bands finding yeah. much more bands one thing that is uh, pretty insane you, i think that in the episode that you had about electrocutioner you mentioned that they had been active for about three years. So when we started this podcast, they barely had had started their band. Yeah. So I think that's kind of insane in a way. Some of the bands uh, that uh, we have uh, talked about didn't exist when we started. So yeah. uh, I think that's a pretty cool... Uh, way of looking at it that the scene is very much alive maybe more than ever since it is yeah. much more easy to make music nowadays and uh cheaper so uh, new bands are coming up every single day uh and uh, we want to come in contact with them and uh, make episodes about them 
to keep the scene alive because uh, I I know that uh, it has been. Uh, sorry about that. I I know that there has been talked about that rock and metal is uh, dead genres and that sort of a thing. And, uh, yeah, and, and and hopefully we are a proof that that's wrong. <laughs> I think that uh, the two and a half years that we have done this basically has proven it very much that the scene is yeah very much alive, and maybe more than ever. New bands are coming in all the time, like I said. And uh, I think that we're going to, as an ending uh, word, I think we're going to still prove it. And I hope that yeah. you guys that has listened to this want to follow the journey and uh, see how we're going to evolve this podcast. Maybe do episodes live, maybe not even in Sweden. Who knows? There are much plans for the future. We have a festival that we have had in mind that we might want to come in contact with and see if we can do a collaboration with them. Uh, so there are much plans for the future, and I hope that you guys are as excited about them as we are. And uh, I think that I am pretty, I feel pretty much done with that. I hope yeah. that you have enjoyed. Do you have anything more to add? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I mean, it's like you were saying, we, we obviously uh, appreciate a lot every single one who uh, listens to our episodes, every single like we get, every single comment. Uh, it it definitely means a lot to us. And, you know, e each like and each comment does help us a lot to uh, reach more people and uh, being able to help these bands uh, reach more people as well. So. Uh, that is definitely something that uh, generally means a lot to us. And uh, yeah, like uh, we also have a lot of a lot of plans for the future, how to evolve and how to keep doing what we're doing and uh, do it more and uh, do it uh, maybe even better. So yeah, yeah. I think I, I think that's a gr great way to kind of like end it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, everything that. All that I want to say right now is uh, thank you for following us so far. I hope that you want to follow us, continue to follow us through the next few years that we're going to do this. Uh, yeah, we and, we, and we obviously also uh, appreciate that you've been listening to this episode. Uh, Absolutely. The end. And uh, we hope that you have enjoyed it as well and uh, that you look forward to more verbalizing. So thanks for listening. See you in yeah, the next thank verbalizing. You.